Hello and welcome to the essence of knowledge satsang. So we'll start with uh, Nidhi's test first. Thank you Guruji. Thank you everyone. I never thought this day will come. Our oral exam gave me a lot of nervousness, but here I am one by one, step by step, and I want to appear. Here are my questions. What causes ignorance? Um ignorance is caused by um our indoctrination books what we learn growing up um it's what we learn and it creates ignorance um uh, knowing that we are not one um there is no oneness and that is what causes ignorance how do we arrive at specific means of knowledge we arrive uh at means of knowledge um we are experiences um experiences means of knowledge really is by direct experience and logic um and means of knowledge are by cause and effect by categorizing etc are criteria for truth predecided um I don't think criteria for truth is predecided the criteria for truth usually is subjective but on path of knowledge the criteria of truth is that whatever is changing is an illusion and whatever is not changing is real unknowability is the absence of knowledge true or false unknowability no it's false a no ability is something that is not even that we cannot even experience so while it's something that we cannot experience knowledge is through direct experience and logic but a no ability is something that maybe we get to through gaining knowledge existence contains everything but what contains existence um existence is emptiness everything is part of everything that we see everything experience experience or everything is within the existence um but it is in the end just emptiness because it is full of it is full of um illusion but with um infinite possibilities but in the end existence is emptiness experiencer is already united with everyone true or false experiencer is experiencing the existence via experiences So yes there is oneness true even though our mind tells us that it is not one so it is united with everyone even though existence is one and experiencer is one why are there are so many experiences um we have one experience at a time uh but the goal of experiences is for the existence or the experiencer to experience the existence and the goal of these experiences is evolution of the experiencer um on the path of knowledge uh It seems like there are so many experiences but there's only one experience at a time. If I am experiencer, who are others? Others are just experiences. For my for an experiencer, everything else are is just experiences, but we are all within the existence. How can a person stay in awareness when the person itself is false? person can stay in awareness even is is only by knowing that i am the experiencer experiencing 
the existence. Um, and this is the path to, through illusion, are we able to really gain the ultimate truth and gain knowledge? Because the path to gain knowledge is through these false illusions and false experiences and everything being an illusion. But through those and through logic, we are able to um, to evolve. And so a person stays in awareness by knowing that I am just the experiencer and everything else is an illusion. What is the importance of contemplation after knowledge? Um, what is the importance of contemplation after knowledge? Um, after, I think in the end, we have to contemplate for ourselves what we understand and what we experience. Knowledge is experience and logic and there's always contemplation. Sorry. I am done, Guruji. <laughs> Thank you. Very good uh, effort by Nidhi here. And uh, you get five and a half marks out of ten, which is on border, but uh, you have cleared the exam. There is enough knowledge to continue in the program. But uh, obviously, you need a little bit more involvement in the program but it is very commendable that you decided to appear for the exam because watching the videos writing some notes there is very easy although it is time consuming but it is the easy part but you decided to test your knowledge this test is your test that is very courageous and now you know where uh, you can improve so I think you will improve and I'll tell you where the answers were wrong and where do you want, need to contemplate more or uh, research more so we will uh, discuss Nidhi's questions now so we will start with uh, first what causes ignorance Nidhi got half marks 0.5 and uh, if you recall uh, in one of the videos in the program, a long list of causes is given. So I was expecting at least four or five uh, causes of ignorance. But uh, it is mostly wrong notions. Initially when we are born, we are born like a blank slate. There is nothing much in the mind. Then it fills up with wrong notions, wrong concepts, imaginary things. And there are many reasons why it happens and everybody gets it. This is the rule here because we stepped into the illusion now obviously this mind is going to get filled with illusion and the pressures of survival and mostly society is built like this. This is in two lines, the answer is in two, li two lines but yes there is a whole video on this topic what causes ignorance. Number two was how do we arrive at specific means of knowledge and this answer was wrong. So there is again a video about the means of knowledge where we justify the means of knowledge. Nidhi also uh, went through the same uh, problem that uh, there was a huge gap between the lessons and the test. She, she said, I am studying since one year, year and a half. So that can cause a little bit of gap. It is not fresh. So what happens is as you uh, move forward, the last lessons they are forgotten so anyhow there is a whole uh, video on the ways to arrive at the correct means of knowledge so reliability reproducibility independent of place and time and the many such uh, justifications are given and then we challenge ourselves minimum possible means of knowledge and we choose only two direct experience which is our right now, right, right here, whatever is being perceived, that is the direct experience and logic, which is the critical ability of the mind to detect mistakes in our perception, conditioning and uh, irrational thinking. That is the ability of logic. So we uh, then reduce everything to these two because you cannot reduce it further. And we remove the books because they are controversial. We remove 
the other gurus because possibly nobody will agree what they say not everybody will agree so we have set up this challenge in this program that we remove everything that can cause doubt and we reduce it to only direct experience and intellect logical ability and it is hugely successful you can see its effects no doubts remain number 3 our criteria for truth predecided so her answer was correct that no they are not predecided nobody decides it nobody has decided it nobody has uh, imposed these criteria on everybody so i gave her full marks although she did, did not explain why how how is it possible that they are not predecided because it looks like that we we are telling you that look this is the criteria these are the criteria so anyhow i assume that she knows why it is not predecided and how we arrived at our criteria which is um, coincidentally same as the criteria of advait vedant or nyaya or buddhism or any other advanced philosophy like science western science these are arrived at by all intelligent people we are not uh, something special we are not doing something special so nobody has decided it we do not copy it from some book and decide to call something true something not true everybody needs to justify their own way of knowing truth if you don't like this yes everybody is free to decide whatever they want but then they will need to take up something else not the path of knowledge number 4 unknowability is absence of knowledge true or false and her answer was correct correct answer is false and i, I think she said false because uh, unknowability is arrived at through knowledge this is what she said which which is very accurate statement if you don't have any knowledge you will assume many things and you will assume that i know everything as soon as you go on learning which is a negative process it is a process of unlearning the knowledge is negative always we arrive gradually at unknowability we find that whatever knowledge can be uh, accumulated is of illusion and there is nothing to know in the truth and you cannot know the truth you can be the truth which is even a bigger bonus you don't need to know it something which is something external to you you don't need to even verify anything you don't need to experiment these are the advantages of uh, not knowing you are freed from the burden of knowing something and holding on to that knowledge as a belief so unknowability is complete knowledge it is total purification of the seeker and that is the state of bliss state of bliss is not that i don't know anything so i just give up and i am happy no state of bliss is there is nothing to know whatever could be known i know it whatever was necessary to know i know it the, the details don't matter i know the essence essence of knowledge and that is bliss so uh, we can go on talking about unknowability but i leave it to you as homework because the video is very short there is a video on unknowability uh, but it is to the point number 5 existence contains everything but what contains existence she got half marks here why did i give her half marks um, because she said existence is empty so what can contain emptiness another emptiness that means nothing isn't it another container over the emptiness but then it will not be empty because the container will be there which which, which will be visible which could be experienced or at least you can theorize that there is some container but nothing existence is not contained in anything it is not an object that is the correct answer i was hoping that somebody will say this but uh, it is okay to say it is emptiness so logically every other statement becomes false about the containing of existence or contents of the existence everything that can be seen as existing existing is already emptiness so but whatever she said later on after she said uh, it is emptiness it was not correct then was not correct you can listen to the recording again check uh, number 6 experiencer is already united with everyone true or false 
Now that answer was wrong. So she did not get any marks. And uh, this is a trick question. Probably she said that yes, it is already united. Uh, but uh, no, that is not the correct way to say it. Everybody do not exist. There is nobody. This is the knowledge, isn't it? If there is nobody, what can unite with what? You see, experiencer is united with experience. That can be said. The yoga union. This statement is a little bit meaningful. Experiencer is united with everyone. <laughs> it is wrong notion. What we are saying is that everyone has an existence independent of the experiencer and somehow they are united. So it is not meaningful because uh, and the everyone stands for people, person and the knowledge is that there is no person, there is no everyone. They are illusions and yes the experiencer is united with illusion. They are one, they are same. So, it is a trick question, yes, I know. It requires uh, a very deep introspection, very deep thinking. Anyhow, today's all questions were very difficult. All 20 questions, both the exams were very difficult. Number 7. Even though existence is one, an experiencer is one, why are there so many experiences? She got half marks again. Why? Because she said that the experience is also one. Because the experience is defined as that which is manifested. That which is uh, visible. And there is only one which is visible. Which is me only. Yeah, the existence itself at the level of non-duality. That is what is manifested as false uh, names and forms. So that much part was correct. And I gave her half marks. But whatever she said after that it was totally wrong. I think she said that we need so many experiences for evolution and so on. No, no, no. It's totally wrong. The ex existence is whole and complete and its essence, the experiencer, is whole and complete. It does not need anything. It does not evolve. All these things are all illusions. It is a part of the dream. And the division of one manifestation into many is due to ignorance. The mind thinks that there is a break in experiences and so it divides or it categorizes the experiences based on many things like uh, there are experiences coming through the eyes, vision, there are experiences coming through the ear, voice, sound, so on. There are good experiences, there are bad experiences, but, but they are not experiences. They are simply uh, covering on the top of pure experience, which is an illusion which simply is, which is simply appearing. That which is simply appearing, the ignorant mind will cover it up with uh, some ideas, some concepts and it will divide it. My experience of yesterday, my experience which was one year ago, so on. So imaginary divisions are made. Sometimes they are very useful for our day-to-day -day life, for survival. But uh, in reality, there is one stream of appearances which is timeless, cannot be known more than that. Nothing more can be known about the experience also. Experience is also unknowable. So think about this in your free time. Number 8. If I am experiencer, who are others? She got full marks. I need not explain it more. There are no others. Sometimes we say that you are also that. That simply means that forget about who you are. There is only one thing. The essence is one. Number nine, how can a person stay in awareness when the person itself is false? So her attempt was very good, but uh, she got half marks. The answer is very simple actually. Awareness is that there is no person. Awareness is the knowledge that there is no person. It's already false. And that is what is remembered. See how simple it is. That is the definition of awareness. That I am not a person, not this body-mind machine. I am that uh, essential emptiness which is witnessing. Another name for it is experiencer, Atman, Brahman, whatever you want to call it. So this is very tricky. The question is very tricky because we always say that we point to the person and we tell the person that your practice is awareness now. You as a person must, must practice awareness. 
those who don't know what is awareness they will start practicing it <laughs> it is very difficult to let go of the person but the practice is simply remembering that i don't need to think of myself as a person except for practical reasons so there is no contradiction here how can the person stay in awareness the person was already not there so the person does not stay in awareness the awareness stays as absence of attachment to the idea of person this sentence is worth writing down awareness stays as remembering and as absence of the idea that i am a person so when there is nobody there is nobody to practice also everybody should think about this everybody should contemplate on this how can i be in awareness impossible is it there is no i so number 10 what is the importance of contemplation of knowledge and again she got 0.5 because there was good attempt and uh, this is you can say a personal opinion now everybody will have a different kind of answer so there is no right and wrong answer uh, from my point of view from my opinion is that uh, it is not important because uh, uh, people on the path of knowledge are very lazy they, they don't want to do any work so why contemplate i have already done it i have passed the exam but you see for practical reasons some people some teachers will say that you continue the contemplation every day you open the program every day you open the book open the notes think about them think about these uh, great sentences one or two examples i have given you just now and uh, keep your mind busy in that because just like we saw it is very easy to forget everything and become a non seeker and fall back into ignorance it is possible it is possible so as a practice it is given to the students but it is totally a personal uh, matter here if somebody wants they can do it uh, if if you love knowledge if you love writing or reading watching this content on path of knowledge then the contemplation will happen as your hobby those who are teaching they don't need to do contemplation uh, separately just like i am taking satsang i am uh, checking your notes and i am answering all the questions all day sitting here uh, the, and the contemplation happens automatically i never forget and then the awareness practice also happens because you hardly get any chance to forget somebody else will remind you that you were wrong here you forgot the knowledge the job of a teacher is of a, you know responsibility students can forget teacher cannot afford to forget so it is a good way to remain in practice teaching is the best way but uh, if possible everybody should uh, do it daily if not daily once a week twice a week sit down with the knowledge so many people do that actually you don't even need to tell them that you need to do it or the other option is also open that i know everything and it is nothing it is all unknowable on what should i contemplate <laughs> that can be opinion of some people but to reach that place it will take some time when you don't give any importance to the path of knowledge that is possible so these are the questions and answers for today and my suggestion to everybody is to try to answer these questions by yourself by writing yourself by discussing with your friends and other seekers we have other groups also you can join them and go through the quiz which is the which is online now all these questions are available online to try out and that is a very good practice that they are very good for contemplation or introspection also the supporting supporting material for this